The Survey Center on American Life reports that two out of three Americans do not have six close friends. And one in eight Americans don't even have one close friend. While there are many reasons for this, the main one, according to experts, is social isolation. No, I'm not talking about government lockdowns that accompany COVID-19, although they did exacerbate the problem according to Oxford University researcher Dr. Robert Dunbar. I'm talking about learned loneliness, or the learned trait of spending large quantities of time completely alone. This form of loneliness is dangerous because, as psychologist Marissa G. Franco explains, it is when a person makes adjustments to being alone that cause them to continue being alone. In other words, learned loneliness is when individuals simply learn to live with a lack of friends rather than try to make new friends. However, as she further explains, while we may think we've adjusted to being alone, the reality is our brains and bodies have not. People who have learned loneliness begin to feel depressed for no apparent reason, begin to view other people as threatening, and devalue human connection. To combat this, we should be making friends. So without further ado, here is the best expert advice to make friends anywhere and grow your social circle. Method 1. Initiate a conversation by finding a positive topic about the other person. Communications expert Leo Loundis in her book How to Talk to Anybody, which I've linked to in the comments section, explains that the best way to begin a conversation with anyone at all is by complimenting them on something unique or interesting they are wearing or have. Be it a beautiful bracelet, a graphic tee, a killer hat, or other safe article of clothing or accessory, these make great icebreakers. Once you've complimented them, you can then ask them where they bought the item. As the conversation progresses, Loundis says that you need to pay special attention to the words they use that don't associate well with the topic at hand. These unusual word associations are topics of conversation. For instance, if you compliment them on their hat and they say, thanks, I bought it at Kohl's, then you can follow up by asking a question about that. Possibly, which Kohl's? I've been looking for a hat myself and haven't had much luck lately. However, Loundis warns that you have to make sure you constantly swivel the spotlight of the conversation back toward them and keep asking them questions until you two finally connect. If you feel the conversation is connecting, consider inviting them for a drink at a local bar sometime or other neutral place like a coffee shop, depending on their personality. But, if people are on their phones, still try initiating a conversation anyways. Most people are simply killing time. However, if you get the vibe that the person is not simply killing time on their phone, then it's best not to approach. Method 2. Have a short list of pre-memorized, open-ended questions. According to communications firm Science of People, asking open-ended questions is the best way to have an impactful, engaging conversation. What are open-ended questions? They are questions that allow the conversation partner to explain something or give their opinion. However, this doesn't mean asking for their latest hot take on a political situation or shocking news story. It is asking qualitative questions that allow them to give their opinions that aren't taboo. Some examples of open-ended questions are, what are some fun things to do in this city? Or, do you know the best place to get blank? Some open-ended questions can also be pre-memorized for certain common conversation topics. For instance, if they mention their job, you can always follow up with, what does blank do if you don't know? Or, what is it like working at in blank job or career? From there, you can use the word association method to pick up more topics of conversation and ask other open-ended questions. In the comments section, I've linked to a list of 200 open-ended questions that covers a wide range of topics. Eventually, the conversation will start rolling and you can then ask them to grab a drink sometime. Method 3. Join interest groups and clubs. Sometimes there's those seasons in life when you aren't around very many people. For these situations, it is best to join a club, organization, or interest group. Websites like Meetup and City Socializer, both linked to in the comments section, show events and interest groups going on in your area. Once you've joined interest groups or clubs, you can begin initiating conversations using the methods above and expand your social circle. One other place to look for friends is to take up a group class like drawing or learning to sail. 
Oftentimes, your local library or community center will have a billboard or information center to learn about where these classes are happening. And the upside with this friendship method is that you might be able to skip past the bar or coffee meetup altogether and go straight toward hanging out, going to the gym together, etc. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please consider supporting me at buymeacoffee.com slash morningwoe.